Hello everyone, welcome to World Mapping Series with me, Indrajit Baryad, Faculty of Geography GS and Geography Optional at Rao's IES Bangalore. In the third lecture of this video series, today we would be talking about the continent that is Africa. Africa as a continent, first definitely we would be dealing with some of the basic uh, facts related to the continent. And these basic facts, if you see over here, first thing about the latitudinal and longitudinal extent. So, Africa extends from 37 degrees north to 34 degrees south. Similarly, this continent spreads through 51 degrees east to 160 degrees west, which makes it a inter very interesting continent. And what's that? You can see this is the only continent in the world which lies in all the four quadrants, all the four quadrants, which four quadrants we are talking about. So in terms of uh, latitudes, the continent is spread over northern as well as southern hemisphere and then it is spread over eastern as well as western hemisphere. So lying in all the four quadrants. In terms of size and population, this continent is second largest and in both the cases it follows Asia. Now looking at some of the basic features of this continent, first what we see are the water bodies which surround this continent and in here you can see towards the west this continent has Atlantic Ocean. Towards the east we have Indian Ocean and towards the north we have Mediterranean Sea. Interestingly here, this is a water body called as Red Sea which is towards the northeast and this Red Sea has been formed due to a fracture in the land mass over here. Now this Red Sea, to the northern end of the Red Sea, we find very famous Suez Canal. Now the significance of Swiss Canal, so Swiss Canal was opened in 1869 and prior to that any international trade, the marine international trade that has to be uh, take place between Europe and Asia, okay, that has to pass through Atlantic Ocean, move through Cape of Good Hope and then move into Indian Ocean. So this was the route that was available for any ship coming from Western Europe into Asia or into Indian Ocean. Now with the opening of Suez Canal in 1869, the path now is Mediterranean Sea crossing through Red Sea and moving into Indian Ocean. And this opening of Suez Canal has almost reduced the distance uh, between Western Europe or to be precise between London and Bombay to be almost around 9000 kilometers, which is a big deal. So Swiss Canal towards the northern end of Red Sea and towards the southern end of the Red Sea, you find what we call as the Strait of Bab el Mandab. So Strait of Bab el Mandab on the southern end of uh, Red Sea and to the northern end of Red Sea, we have the Suez Canal. Politically, uh, Africa as a continent is surrounded by a number of islands, out of which there are four sovereign island nations. What are these four sovereign island nations that we have to know? The first one over here, which is called as Madagascar. The second one over here, which is Mauritius. Third one lies somewhere over here, which is Seychelles Island. And the fourth one, which is Comoros. So four sovereign island nations over here, the Madagascar, we have Mauritius. Seychelles and Comoros. 
four sovereign island nations. Now, to these four sovereign island nations, if I add up two French overseas territories, and which are these French overseas territories over here? So, in this case over here, I'll mark this one as five and this one as six. And so, if we write over here, fifth and sixth, for fifth one is a reunion. And sixth one is called as a Mayote. Both reunion and Mayote, these are French overseas territories. And if you add these two to the four, only four sovereign island nations of Africa, this is what constitutes Indian Ocean Commission, a very important regional grouping over here. So, Indian Ocean Commission, four sovereign island nations of Africa plus two French overseas territories. One interesting idea about the islands of Africa is almost all the islands in Africa are volcanic in origin. But one which is Madagascar Island. Madagascar Island is not volcanic in origin. In fact, Madagascar Island was the continental part of the erstwhile Gondwana land and it separated effectively from the Indian continental mass. So, I can identify it as a continental island, rest almost all, all the islands are volcanic in origin. From here, now if we talk about the regional divisions of Africa. So, if I divide Africa into different regions, the first region of course I will have to talk about would be the Sahara Desert. The Sahara Desert is the largest hot desert in the world. And you can see the spread of Sahara Desert in Northern Africa over here. So, Sahara Desert is spread almost over 10 countries of Northern Africa, right there from Mauritania and Morocco in the west to Egypt and Sudan in the eastern part of the Northern Africa. Now, Sahara Desert being the largest hot desert in the world, it itself comprises of a number of subdivisions or rather we can say a number of different physiographic features. And what are these physiographic features? So, the first physiographic feature of Sahara is called as ergs. Now, what are ergs? Ergs are nothing but primarily sand dunes. So, these sand dunes that you can see over here, now these sand dunes, these are huge, large, massive sand dunes, which can stretch over kilometers in length and their height can go more than 300 meters. These are shifting sand dunes and these sand dunes part of Sahara Desert, these are called as ergs. The second part now, which are called as regs. Now, regs are plain areas. These plain areas of Sahara Desert, what are these made up of? So, these plain areas are made up of primarily gravels and sand. Although the picture that I have used, you can see these plain, plain areas I am referring to. In this picture, in fact, you can see whole of the plain area covered with sand. But effectively, it can be gravel as well as sand, coarse gravels and sand. And most importantly, these are plain areas. Then comes the elevated portions now of Sahara Desert, which are called as Hamdas. Now these Hamdas, these are barren rock plateau, rocky plateau, high plateaus. So, what I am talking about is these portions. So, you can see these are simply highlands or plateaus which are of barren rocks. Of course, at one point of time, all of this also would have been covered by sand. But as of now, if we talk about Hamdas, all the sand has been removed by an aeolian or wind process called as a deflation removal of sand. So, by the process of deflation, the sand has been removed. What remains now are barren rocky plateaus called as Hamdas. 
in certain portions of sahara desert these hamdas are present at or, or with higher height which constitutes some of the mountains of the sahara desert and what would be these hamdas or the important mountains so first what i see are the atlas mountains the atlas mountains now if you see are present in the northwestern part of algeria so the northwestern part of algeria this is where i find atlas mountain roughly around morocco then i have the second one which is the tibesti mountain tibesti mountain you can associate the countries like chad over here with tibesti mountain all of these again are hamdas only okay but of higher height so we are considering them now the mountains and then i have the ahaggar mountains the third one ahaggar mountains again associated with the country that is algeria so atlas mountain morocco tunisia tibesti mountains chad and libya ahaggar mountain algeria these are few important hamdas of sahara desert then after that the fourth subdivision of physiographic division of sahara desert are the oases now oases are water bodies or the regions where water is present in the form of uh, water springs wells or so and around that some greenery develops now these oases supports almost interestingly these oases supports almost 75% of the population that lives in the sahara desert because other areas are definitely not pretty much habitable so 75% of the population residing in sahara desert resides in these oases so four parts now of sahara desert are four physiographic divisions of sahara desert what are those ergs regs we will repeat that again complete so ergs are sand dunes regs are plains you have higher plateaus there which are hamdas and then you have the oases this is first part that is sahara desert second region of africa now which we call as the sahel region now sahel region effectively here if you have to understand it primarily these are all the portions that we identified as sahara so now just at the boundaries of this desert is a would or would be found a region which i can identify as a semi transition zone so this is all the desert sahara desert just you move to the south of it what you'll find is the area with very sparse vegetation in the picture that i have added you can see over here this is all dry area again this is a dry area but with sparse and diffused vegetation this now would be called as the sahel region from sahel the next one that you move so which means further over here so from sahel this is a sahel from sahel further moving southwards i find a region which is the savanna region now savannas what are savannas so savannas are primarily i would say tropical grasslands so savannas are tropical grasslands and these are tropical grasslands so what are the primary characteristic of it you can understand tropical grasslands as a pure transition zone between uh, dry areas that is desert and dense vegetation so here i find dispersed vegetation okay but along with that here grows grasses very much specific to tropical grasslands i find in africa tall and coarse grasses which are called as elephant grass elephant grass so these are tall and coarse grasses and with these tall and coarse grasses like in this picture you can see there are tall grasses elephant grasses along with that you will find 
this whole landscape interspersed with certain trees which are not very dense vegetation of the trees of course they are dispersed trees majorly with grasslands and this type of landscape has been called as parkland landscape parkland landscape because it resembles a landscape of a park in park you see majorly grasses grown but few trees here and there would be found and that exactly would be the case with the tropical grasslands which are called savanna in this region so with this savanna region what you see where it would be found so uh, again a very logical extension that is sahara over here sahel over here and beyond that when you move a little bit of more rainfall and so grasses grow over here now which i will identify as savanna so savanna as of now let's just focus on this strip or this patch so one patch over here second patch over here first second and third over here that is savanna now this savanna effectively stretches into the southward portion also so the southern part of africa this 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 portion okay if you leave this then again there would be this stretch of the tropical grasslands known as savanna okay it will make much more logic okay when i explain the other region and then i'll come back to this distribution so the savanna type of climate now in these grasslands a very important region that i find is present in tanzania which has been called as serengeti national park now this serengeti national park in fact whole of the tropical grassland region because it is a open area it is home to large mammals very large mammals and so all the savanna region countries are called as big game countries within this if i talk about the serengeti region or so or okay, this including right there from kenya's masai region to tanzania serengeti this is whole of the region which has some of the highest density of large mammals in the world including elephants african elephants including lions including giraffes and so on hyenas so you have a very large density of large mammals in this whole region and that becomes savanna region from savanna the next when i move to that that becomes the equatorial rainforest equatorial rainforest now here what you see is equatorial rainforest is spread majorly over uh, congo republic of congo democratic republic of congo and then parts of gabon and cameroon that's where equatorial rainforests are found this primarily is congo basin of africa congo river flows over here and so this is called as the congo basin so these equatorial rainforests are found in the congo basin of africa and these rainforests are second largest equatorial rainforests in the world after what after the amazon rainforest so amazon rainforests are the largest of the equatorial rainforests on the uh, in the world and these are the second largest equatorial rainforests in the world so this is the equatorial rainforest now everything will make sense if i have to draw roughly roughly i'll draw so i'll say first region that i find over here is pure dry region sahara from here i move to the transition zone this first population i call it sahel then i can mark over here you can see in this part gabon congo and so on so the this is the part now where i'll mark the rainforest 
and so around it whole of this region now this becomes your so this effectively becomes your savanna so now it makes clear sense you have very high rainfall over here at the margins a little bit of less rainfall so you have grasslands over here further moving further less rainfall and beyond that very less rainfall and so dry region so there is a pure transition you can see now in this distribution especially right there from equatorial rainforest to the one of the largest or the largest hot desert of the world beyond this if we move to few other physiographic divisions the next one that i find is ethiopian highland which is present in this zone now this is a highland ethiopian highland and it was primarily formed due to the uprising magma so the uprising magma had put a upward epigenetic force in this zone causing the updoming of this region which now is called as ethiopian highlands now this ethiopian highland and the region around it because of this particular geographical reason that i told you that is the uprising convective magma currents or uh, due to that this ethiopian highland and the region around it it hosts some of the highest mountain peaks of or the highest mountain ranges also for that matter of africa so ethiopian highland next after that is a very interesting idea of african rift system so geographically if we see over here in africa there is a rift present right there from ethiopian highland so from ethiopian highland rifting uh, is there one rift is present along this zone and this rift developed when there was a rifting between the african landmass and the arabian landmass so a divergent plate boundary has developed over here and this rifting created this depression which was filled up by the waters of indian ocean to form the red sea that's the first part the second branch of this rift extends in this direction which has created here what we call as the gulf of aden so on one side along the one branch of the rift you have red sea along the another branch of the rift you have gulf of aden and then a third branch it has developed like this and this is called as the african rift valley african rift valley right there from ethiopia to somalia it extends up to mozambique african rift valley now this african rift valley has created a lot of uh, uh, depression rift valley depression at a number of places magma did come out which made this region volcanically very active but in other regions the depression has been filled up by fresh water and with this has come up some of the most important lakes of africa and so the next region of africa that we call as the great lakes of africa now we have to understand great lakes of africa this is quite different from the great lakes of north america how and why so north american great lakes what has been the mode of formation of the great lakes of north america so we know during last ice age during last ice age and you can refer to lecture 1 of this mapping series where in in north american discussion i have discussed the formation of uh, great lakes so great lakes of north america were formed during the last ice age when the glaciers reached or the ice cover reached right there up to the borders of usa and canada so when the glaciers were retreating or i can say during the retreat of last ice age or pleistocene ice age the depressions which were there those depressions were filled up with the glacial melt water forming these great lakes so great lakes are a result of what glacial melt water 
during last ice age. On the other hand, when I am talking about the Great Lakes of Africa, they are a result of rifting. Rifting happened over here and due to the rifting, depressions were formed which were filled up by fresh water forming Great Lakes. Few important lakes of this Great Lake system of Africa, if we talk about one that is Lake Victoria, one of the most important of the lakes of Africa. What is the significance of Lake Victoria from examination perspective if I talk about that? So first thing, Lake Victoria is the second largest freshwater lake in the world. Second largest freshwater lake after which lake? So we know the largest lake of the freshwater lake of the world is present in North America, which is Lake Superior. So after Lake Superior comes Lake Victoria, second largest freshwater lake in the world. Second importance is equator passes through, equator passes through this lake, equator cuts through this lake and this lake is shared by three countries. So the littoral countries of this lake if I see Tanzania, this whole part, now this is Tanzania, then you have on this side Uganda and on this side you have Kenya. So Lake Victoria is shared by Tanzania, Uganda and Kenya. This is Lake Victoria. Along with that, Lake Victoria is also source of one of the longest rivers of the world, which is Nile. I'll detail it later, how white Nile, blue Nile, but as of now, it's a source of Nile. Then comes another important river, that is Lake Tanganyika. Lake Tanganyika is the longest freshwater lake in the world. Lake Victoria, second largest freshwater lake in the world. Lake Tanganyika, longest lake in the world. Then another important one is Lake Malawi. So Lake Malawi, we can understand, told you the rifting has taken place up to Mozambique. And so this is considered almost to be the southernmost lake of this rift system lakes, Lake Malawi. So we have for from name point of view, Lake Victoria, Lake Tanganyika, Lake Malawi. Another one that you should be knowing is Lake Turkana, Lake Turkana which is present in Kenya. These are few important lakes of the great lakes of Africa. Then Ethiopian Highland, we have already talked about the Ethiopian Highland extending over this part, which is a result of magmatic uprising. So overall regions of Africa now, if we talk about, pretty simple, easy. The first one, which is the Sahara Desert. So Sahara Desert. Second one after that becomes Sahel, lesser rainfall, Sahel. Beyond that, Ethiopian Highland. So in this part, I'll draw Ethiopian Highland. After that, I have Savanna all through major leaf in this part and this whole belt that becomes Savanna. Then we have the Swahili coast. Swahili coast primarily is the eastern coast. The eastern coast of Africa called as Swahili coast. Then we have the rainforest, Congo Basin. So, equatorial rainforest over here. And then you have African Great Lakes along this African Great Lakes. And lastly, Southern Africa southern part of Africa. The southern part of Africa is or primarily why it is considered as a separate physiographic division because the southern part of Africa, southern Africa, not just South Africa, southern Africa has 
some of the oldest rock formations in the world. So from this perspective now, these are the different regions into which we can divide all of the continent of Africa. Then moving on to knowing few of the important mountains of Africa and this is one question which is very popular with UPSC. So what are the important mountains? Few of them we have already done. Okay, like uh, first the Hamdas ones, Atlas Mountain, Ahagar Mountains, Tibbasti Mountain. Beyond that you can see over here Ethiopian Highlands have been given and then you have towards south, especially in South Africa, this which is Drakensberg Mountain. Now Drakensberg Mountain is a nothing but a form of escarpment and Drakensberg Mountain is the UNESCO World Heritage Site, Drakensberg Mountain. Here I have told you, here comprises, this is the part of Southern Africa and Southern Africa told you are known for some of the oldest rock formations in the world. So Drakensberg Mountain over here that we should be knowing about. Beyond that, two names that you should be aware of, that is the Mitumba Mountains and Muchinga Mountains. So these are the most important of the mountains of Africa. Then beyond this, this region which is called as Guinea region because this is where you have Gulf of Guinea. So this is the Guinea region and here <coughs> again you have highland formation now called as Guinea highlands, the mountains of Africa. From the mountains of Africa, now next when we move on, let's talk about the drainage system of Africa, a very very important aspect of this continent. So the drainage of Africa, what are the most important rivers? <coughs> Four rivers we have, most important rivers and this I am telling you in the decreasing order of their length. So the longest river of Africa which is Nile River. Then I have second longest river of Africa called as Congo River. Then the third longest river which is River Niger and the fourth longest river that is River Zambezi. These are four most important rivers of African continent. A little bit of detailing about these. So first when I talk about Nile River, so Nile River, the first thing Nile River is one of the world's longest river. When I say one of the world's longest river, it was earlier con uh, considered as the longest river of the world, but with the new findings now, Amazon River competes with Nile River in being the longest river. Nevertheless, yes, it is one of the longest rivers of the world. Now, if we talk about the source of this river, so Nile River primarily has a two streams, one which is White Nile and second that is Blue Nile. White Nile is the main stream with longer length and more of the water and White Nile River has its source in Lake Victoria as I have told you earlier, whereas Blue Nile River the Blue Nile River has its source in this lake called as Lake Tana, which is in Ethiopia. So two major streams of River Nile, which is uh, White Nile River with its source at Lake Victoria and Blue Nile River with its source at Lake Tana. Both of these rivers have a confluence in Sudan from where it flows as single stream Nile River draining into Mediterranean Sea. Now Nile River has been considered to be most important factor for the development of civilization in Egypt. But with uh, along with bringing fertile soil to Egypt and making Egypt agriculture friendly, 
the problem that the people have faced over here has been the frequent flooding of Nile River. And so lately, a very important construction has been done on Nile River to contain this menace of flooding in Egypt, which is a dam called as Aswan Dam. So Aswan Dam, it's not about its size, its volume or anything. Most important significance of Aswan Dam is that it checks the flooding of Nile River, which has helped uh, Egypt to develop its agricultural sector to a higher level. So the Aswan Dam in Egypt on Nile River, that's the first river. Then we move on to the next river, which is Congo River. Now Congo River flowing through, Congo River flowing through uh, Congo River Basin and Congo River Basin, I have told you Congo River Basin is where we have the equatorial rainforests over here, primarily including the countries of uh, Democratic Republic of Congo, Republic of Congo and so on. So you see over here, uh, the Congo River flowing through the region that is the Congo Basin. About Congo River, few important facts. First thing that it is the deepest river in the world. Deepest river in the world. That is River Congo. And another fact, geographically very important from examination point of view, is that this is the river. Since it is traversing through the equatorial region, this is the river, only major river in the world, which cuts equator twice. So you see, the equatorial line I'll be drawing from over here. So, cutting the equator twice. That is the river Congo. Then the next river we move on to is the Niger River. Niger River, uh, no important facts about it, just because it is the third longest river of Africa and you have to see the region. So Niger River getting its name from the country Niger flowing through Nigeria, primarily flowing in the Guinea region, Gulf of Guinea region. So you see the Niger River draining into Gulf of Guinea over here. And then you have the fourth longest river of Africa, which is Zambezi River. Now Zambezi River, fourth longest river, most important point about Zambezi River. So Zambezi River, you can see flowing through Zambia, going along the borders of Zimbabwe, <coughs> moving into Mozambique and draining into Indian Ocean. A very important physical feature that the Zambezi River forms is one of the largest waterfalls in the world, which is the Victoria Falls. If we take its width and its volume discharge, it is one of the largest waterfalls in the world, Victoria Falls. So, Victoria. So, Victoria Falls, if you see, Victoria Falls are present at the borders of Zimbabwe and Zambia, the Victoria Falls, on River Zambezi. These are four most important rivers of Africa. Beyond this, one more river is worthwhile mentioning, which is the Okavango River. Now, Okavango River, what is its significance? So, Okavango River, if you see Okavango River flowing from Angola and moving into a country that is Botswana. The idea is the Okavango River is purely an inland drainage system with its delta not at the coastal region but in the interiors. So, in Botswana, Okavango River forms Okavango Delta, 
which is a huge swamp and this okavango delta this is formed in the region which is kalahari desert region so this is a seasonal formation definitely not a year round formation but it is considered to be a lifeline for the wildlife that is living in and around this region in the kalahari desert a very very important formation so here you can see effectively it to be a very green region and so but it is a seasonal formation definitely in the other regions it completely dries up the okavango river delta which is present in botswana so these are the most important drainage systems the drainage systems of the world of africa so lastly now if i talk about one more feature of africa we can talk about the deserts of africa and deserts of africa three most important one that you have to know first one already i told you that is sahara desert over here on this side then you have in this region kalahari desert so kalahari desert where botswana is a very important country right now i have shown you okavango uh, delta and then on this side you have the namib desert now namib desert development has been attributed mainly to a cold ocean current that flows over here so we have three most important deserts in the continent of africa so what we have learned are some of the basic informations and facts about africa moving beyond the regions of africa different regions of africa their characteristics and have talked about mountains and the drainage system of africa which completes all the information about the physical characteristics of africa so i hope today we have learned all the relevant details of african continent from the point of view of upsc examination so that's it for this lecture everyone thank you for watching with the hope that you have learned something from this lecture see you next time in the next lecture of this uh, world mapping series till then everyone take care bye and thank you